Welcome back to AI now 575 with Arrow. We've officially updated the total from 500. Um, using the bottom of the top green arrow as my aim point, trying to sneak past that tree and I'd rather risk ricocheting off that wall because it's still usually a safe line. Uh, as long as you get on the right side of the wall and not trap right behind it. Um, sometimes even if you get trapped behind it, you still have a putt or a throw in. Pretty reliable line for Coyote Canyon 1. Here, using my Light Glide Ballista Pro, my aim point is the top of the bottom green arrow. Heavy Anheuser, looking to get some bounce off of this pillar here and get somewhere within 300 feet for a low ceiling eagle run. Uh, really just recommend familiarizing yourself with different distances and different spots using the practice function on this. Now I'm using an accurate glide musket and it's pretty close from 256 feet. Um, sometimes you may need to disc up and use a recoil or ballista for that shot. Um, but try to avoid the caves on the right side of the basket from this view. Um, otherwise you may have to do some rotate the world putting, which I am not very good at. Uh, slider all the way to the left, using the top of the bottom green arrow as my aim point. Not quite full power with the glide wind recoil. Trying not to hit those canyon walls on the right, but also not that tree on the left or that canyon pillar. Uh, because you can go swimming if you get the line wrong here. Uh, but if you get it right, it pretty much acts as like a Sunshine Glade 4 or Sunshine Glade 2, depending on how far you are. So I tend to use either the Accurate Windbreak River or, uh, or an Accurate Windbreak Musket or sometimes Accurate Glide Musket, depending on how far I am for, for this eagle shot. And did I line this? Yeah! Oh, man. And this is why I like this line. You you almost completely eliminate the risk of water uh, if you get the line right, um, but you can hit the eagle, and then that was such a such a bonus to get it from there. Kind of operates, like I said, like an ace. So here I'm doing a, a full send with an accurate glide musket on a forehand line. Uh, I think it's better to air on the right side of the canyon wall there in the gap, because if you hit the right side, you can still end up on the ground. Worst case scenario, you can save par. Uh, if you hit the left side, you can drop there in the canyon, and then you got a, that tricky drop zone shot. Um, so I think it's better to, it's better to if you're going to choose between one of the walls, you want to air to the right as opposed to airing to the left. Um, in this case, I think it's better to air to the right than air to the left again. Um, I do a full send with a Glide Skip Ballista Pro, um, and really just trying to make sure you don't hit either one of those first two pillars because then you still kind of have a shot. You can also get, like, I got a little bit of an unlucky collision with some of those, like, coyote bushes there. Um, but, I mean, as long as you're within 100 feet for an eagle look, I think here the priority is erring on the side of undershooting the basket rather than overshooting, especially from this line, because if you overshoot, you can sail past and potentially wind up OB on the other side. So I'd rather hit, like, top band, cage, uh, or even fall, like, a little bit short and wind up nice. Getting those, getting both of those eagles. So I definitely think to maximize your score on Coyote Howl, you need to hit Coyote 5 both times. And same thing if you're trying to three-star Coyote Canyon just on one run. I think you definitely need an eagle on Coyote 5, especially to, to if you're struggling with some of the other holes to minimize some of those effects. So here I take a forehand line with an accurate windbreak fuse. You can all, or musket. You can also use an accurate glide uh, musket. I think it's probably a better disc generally in a lot of wins. But now I tend to take a, uh, a backhand line on that, on that hole there. Um, so I, I try to remember in some of the other videos where that might be, where that might be showcased. I'm sure, I'm sure one of the other AI 575 videos will showcase the backhand line that I tend to use now for this hole. Um, and I use that in any wind. So um, here I'm just trying to line it up because of the three headwind. This is a shot that I, especially after getting the eagle on uh, three and five, wasn't <laughs> wanting to be careful about to make sure I didn't mess it up. Uh, this one's tough. I, I'm glad I got the right to left crosswind here at uh, about eight o'clock. If you get the, even in a one uh, wind coming from left to right, this hole's much harder. My aim spot here is the bottom of the bottom green arrow, kind of right at the bottom of that pillar in the distance putting just a little bit of Anheuser on it. But the main considerations here are not hitting that first pillar on the left, making it across so you don't end up in the water. Better to end up on that ramp on the right. But you're also trying not to end up on that ramp on the right as well. 
Um, because if you do end up on the ramp, it's going to be a pretty tough comebacker for birdie. Whereas if you end up in the area that I ended up in, it's, it's very manageable. Here, I think you've definitely got to ace run it unless you have an insane win and you don't trust your comebackers. Uh, but my aim point's the bottom of the middle arrow. And I'm kind of right uh, in between the T and the pillar. And oh, so close there. Usually if you miss the run, you're going to have like, yeah, 60 to 80 feet on the comebacker. On, and a one or two wind, not too difficult. And a three wind, that can get a little tricky. So it depends on where you are like in a three star run uh, or you know your comfort levels with throw-ins and stuff for, for this kind of a dynamic. If I'm not trying to run it, I might instead do a higher hyzer to drop it like a grenade type of a throw or an accurate windbreak river. Um, here I'm using the bottom of the top arrow as my aim point. There's a, I'm like right at the intersection of a, a line on the canyon wall and right where the arch begins. A ton of Anheuser. Uh, I like this play a lot because you can usually will bounce off. In this case, man, that was that was probably about the worst outcome that I've gotten here besides ending up right behind the pillar. But I know I've got some options being, you're better off being on the right side of this pillar here than right behind it. So I'm kind of thinking about what my line is and I decided to do this uh, uh, forehand, forehand line here. Um, do I do, oh yeah, go, okay, so I just said backhand. Um, but I was saying, if you if you get on either the left side of the pillar or right side of the pillar, that skip is gonna put you in a pretty decent spot actually for, um, for, for an eagle attempt. And if you end up on that kind of ramp right on the left side of this pillar I'm next to, um, you're also gonna have a shot at eagle, though it's definitely a difficult ace. That worked out really well for me. And this is really just a shot of spending some time in the practice function, getting used to the initial drive, as well as uh, different scramble opportunities that you can take if you end up stuck behind the pillar like I did just there. Uh, you don't want that to be something that you are inexperienced with in a situation where you need it for a record or a rating, an MP or a pro tour round or something like that. You want it to be a situation that you feel very familiar with navigating. So here I decided to take uh, the same exact line. I was really playing with this until, now I tend to use the Light Glide uh, Ballista Pro, but here I was still playing with my Glide Skip Ballista Pro line. And I think I hit the gap this time. Yeah, oh, so if you if you bounce off of that shot, that's what I mean is you end up, you end up getting a much clearer line. But if you sneak through the pillar and that wall that I ended up hitting, uh, you can get like an amazing distance on this initial drive. So I have a shot at an eagle here, though it's obviously a far away, incredibly difficult one. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't believe this is an eagle I've gotten still. This is, uh, I've hit metal a few times, but I haven't actually drained this one. So uh, I think it's definitely wiser to play this for birdie, just generally speaking. But I mean, if you're comparing 0% chance to uh, one in a thousand <laughs> percent chance, uh, it's still better to have some odds. Uh, so here I'm definitely going to run it again with the accurate windbreak musket. Same exact aim point as before, bottom of the middle arrow between the T and feet and the pillar in the distance on the right. And just trying to drop it in with the right amount of hyzer. I'm not using quite full power, just a little bit less than full power. And I nail it. Man, I was feeling so good about that. Um, especially after the run that, I, that, I, that I've already been having. Um, that pair of eagles on the first round and then birding out. So you can see here, I'm using the same exact aim point as before, except I'm raising it a little bit higher so that I can do a uh, straight pull back with a light glide ballista pro. Um, and just let the wind kind of carry me in. You can see I the main thing is just not ending up on that ramp and not hitting that first pillar. I think between the two, you may be off, I'm not sure. Either one works, but the main thing is you just want to do whatever you have to do to not not end up in the water. I think it would be better to plan to play it for par than uh, than to wind up in the water on that hole for sure. So you want to really air. So yeah, okay, here I'm using the backhand line, which is the bottom of the middle arrow, right at the bottom of that twin branch tree there that I just passed. I like to try to end up in that little loop on the right. Uh, if you get the line exactly right, you can actually get like a like a skip off of the tree roots into the into the basket or at least near it. I haven't done it exactly, but I've I've uh, I think I've hit metal on that shot before. So I think it might be a possible ace if you get the 
you get it exactly right. But I like to try to go under the root on the right of that last hole. So here I'm uh, aiming the bottom of the bottom green arrow next to the bottom left of this first pillar. Uh, full send with a glide skip ballista pro. And really just trying to make sure not to hit either of those first two uh, pillars, but also neither, but neither one of those cactuses. If you get one of the bushes on the left there, you have a pretty good look, but I mean, this is a pretty, this is about as good as it gets, I think, as far as, um, as far as the drive. I mean, if you could do this every time, that would be, you know, that would be amazing. Um, but this is another one I think you want to spend some time with in the practice function. Really just get used to so you can optimize this every time. Um, especially since Coyote Canyon can be a pretty difficult course uh, for a lot of people. I think you really want to get comfortable with Coyote 5 to make sure that you're going to give yourself a, a shot at eagling it. Um, and ideally, you just want to make sure you can, you can really nag, uh, nab that eagle. So here I'm doing the same thing, you can see. I think I even do hit, oh no, I, I didn't either time, wow. But you can see I'm still kind of hugging that right wall because again, I'd rather hit that right wall than the left one as you're making your way through the gap there. Um, I know this is possible to ace. Uh, I have not done that yet, I've come close. Um, but again, I'm just trying to hit my eagle spots where I can uh, and where it's safe to do that. Using the same line as before here, bottom of the, uh, sorry, the top of the bottom green arrow is my aim point. Not quite full power, just a, like a millimeter below full power with a glide wind recoil. Try not to hit this canyon wall on my right or this tree or pillar on my left. And if you, if you get that line dialed in, you usually end up with this like two, in this case, this is a great distance, 230 feet. So uh, this is a tiny bit uphill, I believe. Um, so I'm doing the bottom of the green arrow at the bottom of the blue bubble, and I'm treating this almost exactly like Sunshine Glade 4. That's how I, in my mind I'm visualizing it. This is like kind of the power mount, and bam, nail it again. I was over the moon right here, and so I'm thinking now, I'm like, man, if I can birdie out, this will be my first 12 under on Coyote Canyon ever. Um, I was feeling so excited, even in retrospect. Uh, so... Uh, once again, using my uh, Light Glide Ballista Pro. And I just remember my actual aim spot for this, if you want to go back, it's actually the bottom of the bottom green arrow. There's a tiny little like notch on the canyon wall. I'm, that's what I'm aiming at uh, in that shot. And I just remember that's, that's the same thing for round one as well. Uh, so with this bush in the middle, I think I try to run with an accurate windbreak river. If you're accounting for collision, I think you want to use like a ballista instead. Um, but again, you just want to kind of, it depends on your distances, but I think you want to practice everything from like 240 to 300 or so feet and just get used to what your lines are for making sure that you're not hitting the outside of this arch here. Obviously, as long as you make side, the inside of the, the main cave, you're going to be just fine. And as long as you avoid this little cave system in the right of the basket over here. Um, if you do wind up in that cave system over there, you can have a somewhat difficult rotate the world putt just depending on, on where you end up in, uh, in there. Uh, so here I'm feeling like I'm home free and definitely not going to run it. Just bottom of the top arrow in my same spot. It's like right at the bottom of the wall in that arch and making sure that I, uh, again, am hugging this wall for the ricochet as opposed to hitting the tree and it just sets up a tap in and I'm like, bam. Uh, so 23 on Coyote Howl. Uh, this is the tournament record for this uh, for this tournament so far, uh, but I'm sure it's only a matter of time before Lonely Belgian catches up and posts a 24 or better. Uh, all right, I'll uh, I'll catch you on some of the other tournaments. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe.